Okay, guys, we have already completed the two trinucleotide repeat disorders. That's already we have completed the fragile X syndrome as well as a myotonic dystrophy. Now let's continue with the next trinucleotide repeat disorder, which is going to cause the ataxia in the people. That's the Huntington's disease. Huntington's. I have already discussed hunting is the dominant sport. So it follows which inheritance pattern? Autosomal dominant inheritance pattern. It's autosomal dominant inheritance disorder. So in this condition, what exactly is happening? So there is a gene mutation which is leading to CAG repetitions. Okay, CAG, CAG repeats. CAG, it's a trinucleotide repeat disorder, right? So CAG repeats are going to be more in number, more and more number of CAG repeats are going to occur. Okay, usually normal people, Okay, normal people have how many repeats? 10 to 35 repeats are normal. Okay, 10 to 35 repeats are normal. If a patient is having more than 36 repeats, 36 to 200 repeats, then we can say this person is having Huntington's disease or Huntington's chorea. So, because of this repeats, trinucleotide repeats, what exactly is happening? See, there is a damage or degeneration. Okay, it's a degeneration of striatum okay striatum it's a part of basal ganglia right so striatum includes what and what striatum includes two structures that is caudate caudate and putamen so caudate and putamen these are the two structures which are present in the striatum so these two structures are getting damaged caudate and putamen okay so the neurons in this area are undergoing a neurodegeneration so which neurons are present so in the striatum in the basal ganglia it's mainly inhibitory right so GABA neurons GABAergic neurons so GABA neurons are getting degenerated so I used to remember something like this so GABA is an inhibitory neurotransmitter it inhibits the movements okay the basal ganglia the striatum is considered as an input and the striatum is producing the GABA which is inhibitory inhibitory for the movements so such inhibitory neurotransmitter is gone now it's gone inhibitory neurotransmitter is gone so when the inhibitory neurotransmitter is gone now more movements will occur more unnecessary movements will occur so that is chorea so because of the loss of gabonergic neurons so involuntary movements okay involuntary movements called as chorea so now from this day you can say so the huntington's chorea where is the damage basal ganglia in basal ganglia where is the striatum Striatum includes which structures? Caudate and putamen. Which neurons are lost? GABA neurons are lost. GABA is going down. Okay. Now the point which I want you to know is in your cerebral hemispheres, if you see the gross morphology, see, for example, there are these ventricles. Okay. Ventricles will be there like this. Okay. There are two ventricles, parasioles, two ventricles are there. First ventricle, second ventricle. Okay. Now side to this, there is caudate nucleus. Caudate nucleus will be present something like this. So caudate nucleus is present very close proximity, just a side to the ventricles, you are having this caudate nucleus. Now this caudate nucleus is undergoing damage now. As the caudate nucleus is getting damaged, what happened to the ventricle size? Now ventricles, it's a fluid filled space, right? Ventricles will be enlarged. So there is enlargement of, on grass, there is enlargement of ventricles. Okay, the lateral ventricles or the parasols are going to be enlarged. And not only that, that patient who is having this Huntington's disease after his death, if you see, there is a frontal and temporal. There is frontotemporal, okay, frontal and temporal lobes have undergone atrophy. Atrophy of frontal as well as the temporal lobes. Next, what else are the important points? See, I have said you, it's a CAG repeats, right? CAG repeats. What are the gene mutation? Why the CAG repeats, sir, if you ask me? The CAG repeats are because of a gene mutation called as HTT gene mutation. Huntington's gene. Okay, Huntington's gene mutation. Now, you, if you ask me why the GABA neurons are getting damaged, okay, the neurons are getting degenerated, right? See, in this, it's thought that there is something called as excitotoxicity. We don't have exact uh, pathophysiology. We don't, we don't wait in a clear way but it's thought that the glutamate okay which is the excitatory neurotransmitter okay it's continuously going to stimulate a receptor called as a nmda receptors on these neurons nmda receptors are getting continuously stimulated which will allow the which will allow the chloride entry sorry which will allow the calcium entry into the cells okay more and more calcium will start to enter into the neurons and that's what is causing the gaba 
neuron degeneration. So in a simple way, I can say it's the glutamate, which is an excitatory neurotransmitter, too much excitation, that's excitotoxicity is going to kill the GABA neurons. See, this glutamate toxicity is due to this mutation, HTT gene mutation, CAG repeats are going to be seen. Because of that, glutamate excitotoxicity is killing the GABA neurons. So GABA is going down. That is leading to unnecessary movements. Okay. So, what else I want you to know is, sir, this patient, at what age he is going to present to you? He is going to present to you somewhere between 30 to 40 years. Okay, a patient is going to present to you by 30 to 40 years. What are the symptoms that are going to be seen? Chorea. So, involuntary movements, chorea is going to be seen. Not only that, these patients are also going to have aggression. Okay, so these patients are going to have aggression, very much aggressive. And sometimes these patients are going to be depressed. So, usually, whenever you see a 30 years old male with the chorea unnecessary movements, see, chorea is also going to be seen in um, one more condition, there is a called as a syndrome scoria. Syndrome scoria, what exactly is that? Rheumatic fever. But syndrome scoria is going to be seen in children, 10 to 15 years of age. But whenever you see a 30 to 40 years old with chorea, aggression and depression, such mood abnormalities. Now, usually what do you think is maybe substance, abu uh, substance ab abuse? But here there is no substance abuse. This patient is having Huntington's chorea. Huntington's. Okay, these patients are suffering with Huntington's disease. Now, how to treat this Huntington's disease? This is also very much important. Okay, how to treat that uh, Huntington's disease? See, it is thought that, it's thought that, yeah, GABA is going down. But it's thought that in these people, whatever the chorea is there, chorea is mainly due to dopamine. So, it's the dopamine which is responsible for this chorea. Okay, dopamine is a stimulatory for the movements, right? GABA is going down. So, that relatively, that dopamine is the one which is responsible for this unnecessary movement, chorea. So, what you have to do? You have to decrease the dopamine or you have to inhibit the dopamine. So, drugs which are used in the treatment. Okay, the drugs which are used in the treatment. The first drug is called as tetrabenazine. Tetrabenazine. Tetrabenazine as well as reserpine. Okay, tetrabenazine as well as reserpine. So, what exactly are these drugs? These drugs, for example, look at this is the uh, neuronal ending. That's a neuronal ending. So, here you know it. Tyrosine is going to enter into the neurons. Now, th this tyrosine will be converted into dopa. The dopa will be converted into dopamine. This dopamine have to be packed inside the vesicle so that vesicles will release. Exocytosis will occur. Now, the entry okay, that dopamine have to enter into the vesicles. Dopamine have to enter into the vesicles. For that, there is a transporter. That transporter is inhibited. Okay, that a transporter is going to be inhibited. The vesicular uptake, the vesicular uptake of the dopamine is going to be inhibited by this drug called as a tetrabenazine as well as, well as reserpine. So that now inside the vesicles, there is no dopa, sorry, there is no dopamine. So no dopamine is going to be released. No dopaminergic action. Okay, as simple as that. So tetrabenazine as well as reserpine, these are vesicular uptake inhibitors. Now there is one more drug which is called as a haloperidol. Okay, hello, pyridol. So, what exactly is this hello pyridol doing? It's a dopamine antagonist. Okay, dopamine receptor blocker, dopamine antagonist. So, this can also be used for the treatment of Huntington's chorea, Huntington's disease. Okay, so with this, we have completed the Huntington's. The important points which I want you to know is so the patient is going to have aggression, depression, chorea related problems, all because of CAG repeats. Autosomal dominant condition, striatal damage, Dop uh, sorry, gabinergic neurons are dead because of glutamate excitotoxicity. You have to decrease the dopamine to treat the chorea. You can use the drugs like tetrabenazine as well as reserpine. So, with this, we have completed the Huntington's chorea. Now, let's discuss about the next disorder, which is uh, in the trinucleotide repeat uh, disorders, that's a Friedrich ataxia. Okay. So now let's discuss about the second disorder that is Frid Rick's ataxia. So what exactly is the problem? So see this Friedrich ataxia, it is an autosomal recessive condition. Autosomal recessive condition because of mutation of which gene? Frataxin gene. Frataxin gene mutation. This frataxin gene is present on chromosome number 9. This frataxin gene is mutated. 
So this frataxin gene is going to code for a, protaxin, a protein called as frataxin, which is a very important protein. It's a mitochondrial protein. Mitochondrial. It's a mitochondrial protein, which is involved in mitochondrial iron regulation. It involves in regulating the iron inside the mitochondrial levels. Mitochondrial. Iron regulation. Okay, mitochondrial iron regulation. See, the point which I want you to know is whenever I see the this uh, condition, Friedrich ataxia, the three things will come into my mind. So, it's going to affect this Friedrich ataxia is going to affect three things because the frataxin gene is mutated, frataxin protein is not properly functioning. So, the iron will start to accumulate inside the mitochondria. Mitochondria are present in multiple, multiple systems. So, multiple systems are going to be affected. Okay, the, these patients who are having Friedrich ataxia, the multiple systems are going to be affected. What are those multiple systems, sir? So, brain is going to be affected. Okay. Heart. Oh, cardiomyopathies are going to be seen. Hypertrophic cardiomyopathy is going to be seen. Next, pancreas. Okay, pancreas is going to be affected. So, pancreas is going to get accumulated with the iron. So, that iron is going to damage the pancreatic islets, which will lead to the diabetes mellitus. Okay, as simple as that. So, Friedrich ataxia, three organ systems are going to be mainly affected. That's the brain, heart, as well as the pancreas. Okay. Now, the points which I want you to know is, see the symptoms, okay, the symptoms, when they will begin, they will begin in adolescence, okay, the symptoms are going to be begin in the adolescence. So, what are the symptoms, sir, if you ask me? See, because of this iron accumulation, the spinal cord as well as the cerebellum are going to be degenerated. Okay, they are degenerated. Degeneration of the spinocerebellar tract. Spinal cord is degenerated as well as cerebellum is degenerated. So, let me write spinocerebellar tracts which are there in the spinal cord. They are degenerated. They are gone. When the spinocerebellar tracts are degenerated, you cannot have a proper movement because the proprioception is not properly being conveyed to the cerebellum. So, there will be ataxia. The patient is going to have ataxia. Okay, done. Ataxia is going to be there. Not only that, DCML, dorsal column, medial lemniscal tracts, dorsal column, medial lemniscal tracts, which are carrying the proprioception, vibration, they are also damaged. So, as they are damaged, the patient is not going to feel proprioception, conscious proprioception loss. Okay, there is conscious proprioception loss as well as that's a proprioception loss means positional sensation, positioning, position loss as well as vibration loss. Okay, vibration loss. Because of the damage to the spinocerebellar tracts, ataxia cannot have the proper movement. Proper muscle contractions are not going to be possible. As well as the dysarthria will be seen. Because the movements of the muscles, they are also not proper. So, dysarthria, no proper contraction of the muscles, dysarthria can be seen. Loss of positional sensation as well as vibration sensation loss is going to be seen. The uh, upper motor neurons, okay, the uh, corticospinal tracts, the corticospinal tracts are damaged, okay, due to loss of cortico spinal tracts. See, the, all this is because of the spinal cord degeneration. There is degeneration of the spinal cord. The three important tracts that are getting damaged are spinocerebellar tracts are damaged, dorsal column medial hemiscal tracts are damaged, as well as the corticospinal tracts are getting preferentially damaged. So, corticospinal tracts are what? Cortex to spinal cord. They are the upper motor neurons. So, there is the patient is going to have upper motor neuron lesions. Upper motor neuron lesions. You know it, upper motor neuron lesions means upper motor neuron is gone, so lower motor neuron is over excited. The lower motor neurons are over firing because the upper motor neurons are not fu functioning. The lower motor neurons are working more. As the lower motor, work, motor neurons, whenever they are working more and more, there will be spastic paralysis. Okay, there will be upgoing Babinski sign, spastic paralysis, hyperreflexia, hypertonia, all these symptoms are going to be seen. So, these are the features for, uh, what you can see. See, apart from that, I have explained you, in uh, Friedrich ataxia, three organ systems are going to be affected. What are they? See, it's a pancreas. So, pancreas is going to be affected. As a pancreas is going to be affected, the patient can manifest diabetes mellitus. Okay, diabetes mellitus is going to be seen. Not only that, but the heart involvement. The heart is going to be loaded with the iron, which is going to cause the hypertrophic. Hypertrophic cardiomyopathies. Okay, hypertrophic cardiomyopathy is going to be seen. So, pancreas is going to be affected. So, the beta cell dysfunction, islets, okay, the beta cells of islets, okay, sorry, islets, they are going to be 
affected so that will lead to the diabetes mellitus heart is going to be affected that will lead to the hypertrophic cardiomyopathy spinal cerebellar tracts damage dcml tracts damage the upper motor neurons damage see all these things are going to be seen these are all the brain involvement first i have discussed about the brain involvement pancreas involvement as well as the heart involvement now apart from this what i want you to know is if you look at this fellow who is suffering with friedrich ataxia okay this uh, fellow who is suffering with the friedrich ataxia he is going to have the scoliosis kyphos scoliosis is going to be seen okay kypho scoliosis so kyphosis as well as scoliosis so kypho scoliosis is going to be seen the bent okay so kypho scoliosis is seen true apart from that if you look at their feet okay there's going to be high arched feet which is called as pescavus deformity okay these patients are going to have so not only that if you look at their feet they are going to have the high arched feet which is called as a pescavus deformity This cavus deformity means the foot, like you know, the arch. Okay, whatever the arch that is there in our foot, it is going to be big. So, this cavus deformity is going to be seen something like this. Okay, this this cavus deformity is also seen in one more condition, which is called as a Charcot Marie Tooth disease. Okay, in Charcot Marie Tooth disease, the demyelinating condition. There also you can see this uh, high arch foot, which is called as this cavus deformity. So, this is the foot deformity. And if you look at their toes, their toes are something called as a hammer toes. Whenever you see the word hammer toes, hammer toes are seen in. same condition hammer toes okay hammer toes are going to be seen so the important points are kyphos scoliosis is seen pescavus deformity hammer hammer toes the pancreatic insufficiency is going to cause the diabetes mellitus heart condition is hypertrophic cardiomyopathy spinal cord uh, degeneration cerebellar degeneration important cerebellar degeneration so the whole point of this discussion is ataxia so ataxia is because of the cerebellar degeneration cerebellar tracts are degenerated even these patients as the cerebellum is getting degenerated they are going to have the uh nystagmus okay it's uh, the up beating nystagmus is going to be seen up beating nystagmus is going to be seen because of the cerebellar involvement so we have completed the two important conditions uh, the two important disorders one is huntington's that is chorea and the other is ataxia okay gait abnormality properly he cannot walk gait abnormality he will try to fall this side that side okay so with this we have completed all the trinuclear atp disorders in the next video we will be discussing about the genomic imprinting okay hope the video is helpful thank you